laundry detergent. Check. <laughs> Baby powder. Check. Scary music CDs. Check. Out of order signs? Check. Oh, super glue. Check. And last but not least, the key to the animal cages. Oh, this is going to be good. Operation Sabotage Theme Park is about to begin! <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for a beautiful day. Yes, indeed. <sighs> hey, Gabe, we got a package. I think it's from Raja. Well, what do you know? All the way from Madagascar. Oh, wonder what it is. There's only one way to find out. <sighs> Look, there's a note. What's it say? Greetings from Madagascar. We just discovered new species of termite. Thought you'd like to see one. It has been too long since you last visit island. Raja. What a great guy. Yeah, we'll have to remember to thank him sometime. <gasps> this is awesome. This will make a great addition to our live bug collection. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, wait. There's more. P.S. Watch fingers. We named new termite Little Piranha. Uh-uh. Does it really say that? See for yourself? Woo! That was a close one. <sighs> oh, I know. Let's give him something to eat. Oh, wait a minute. I've got a peanut. A peanut? That's way too big. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> he ate the whole thing. I can't believe it. Oh, oh, I know. Let's try something bigger. Oh, I got an apple in my lunch. An apple? You're kidding me, right? <sighs> If I hadn't seen it, I would never have believed it. Oh, oh, I know. Let's try some wood. I mean, after all, he is a termite, right? I'm starting to see now why they call it the little piranha. <laughs> You're going to feed him that? What's next, a roll-top desk? Watch this. Come on, Gabe. You're going to make him sick. Come on. That was incredible! This little guy would be great for the show! Oh, I know! We'll call him Woody! Okay, but I think he's had enough for now, don't you? Hey, Woody! Uncle Cody thinks you've had enough! What do you think? <laughs> See, told ya. Okay, I guess you're right. I guess it's time to find you a cage, little buddy. And a good strong one, too. That bug could do some serious damage around here. <sighs> Come on. And stay out of my lunch! Mm. Mm. Hello. Oh, hi. Can I help you? Yes, I'm looking for the extreme team. I'm half of the extreme team. The other half's backstage. He'll be back in a minute. I'm Cody, by the way. Uh, nice to meet you, Cody. I'm Victoria Hathaway from Adventure TV. We're kind of a big deal. Adventure TV? Hey, Gabe, get out here quick. Yeah, what's up, Cody? 
This is Victoria Hathaway. She's from Adventure TV. Wow, that's kind of a big deal. Uh, welcome to Incredible World. Uh, I'm Gabe. Oh, oh, nice to meet you, Gabe. Uh, I suppose you're here about the uh, theme park award. No, actually, I'm not. I'm here to talk to you. Really? What about? Well, I'm sure I don't have to tell you two how popular your show is. It is? I mean, the people that come here seem to like it. Well, of course. I mean, it's being talked about in all the trade magazines. It's all over the industry. In fact, it's probably why Incredible World has won the best theme park award for the past three years. Wow! Do you really think so? Yes, I really do. So let me ask you a question. Have you two thought much about the future? What do you mean? I mean, what's next for you? What are your career goals? Uh, you do have goals, don't you? I mean, you're certainly not planning on staying here forever, are you? Well, I don't know. We've only been doing the show for three years, and we really like it here. Incredible World is a very, very nice park. No doubt about that. But if you want to be successful, you've got to keep moving up. As they always say, if you're not moving forward, you're falling behind. So, have you ever imagined what it would be like to have your own television show? Our own show on Adventure TV? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. We want to add an animal show for children to our lineup, and we think the Extreme Team would be perfect. Oh, when do we start? I knew you'd be excited, so I brought the contract with me. No sense in delaying things, right? So, if you could just sign at the bottom, Whoa. we can talk about schedules. Wait a second. I mean, we should read it first. I mean, we should know what we're signing, right? Well, if you want to take the time to read all of that, I guess that's up to you. Uh, However, I can assure you it's all standard language, nothing unreasonable. What do you think, Cody? Well, it is pretty long. I guess you're right. Can you come back tomorrow afternoon? Let's make it first thing in the morning, shall we? I don't want to waste any more time. To succeed in show business, gentlemen, you have to move quickly. You do want to be successful, don't you? Well, of course we want to be successful. Good, just checking. So, here's my card and some information about our company. I think you'll like what you see. So, congratulations, gentlemen. I hope you realize how very fortunate you are. You know, most people would give their right arm to be in your shoes right now. Oh, man. Can you believe it, Gabe? We're going to be big stars. Yeah, look. She put her name in lights. Wow. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Have either of you seen Mr. Peterson? Uh, he's not in his office? No, he's not. Somehow, Mabel talked him into riding roller coasters with her. So I guess he's still out in the park somewhere, and of all days, it had to be today. Wait, 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 wait. Mr. Peterson riding roller coasters? But he hates big rides. They make him sick. I know, and now he's out there throwing up while I'm back here dealing with all these problems. What problems? Oh, all over the park, terrible things are happening, like ketchup in mustard containers. Salt shakers glued to tables, fountains overflowing with soap bubbles. And I just got a call from Kitty Land. Someone switched the music CDs, and now scary music is making all the kids run for their lives. Wow, someone really has been busy. Listen, if you see him, tell him he's needed in the office immediately. Oh, poor Miss Ryan. <sighs> Hey, Gabe, I just had a bad thought. The animal cages! Oh. Oh. Oh, wasn't that a fun day? Oh, I think I could have ridden that behemoth ride a hundred times. Just wheel me to the stage. I think I can walk from Okey there. Okie dokie! Oh, 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 you got 
water sign stuck to your back. Oh, I wonder how that got there. Oh, what's it say? Out of order. Leave it there. Oh. That's exactly how I feel. Oh, oh. Uh, oh well, my aching uh, back. Um, oh. I hope you had as much fun oh. as I did. Well, well, maybe we can do some water rides tomorrow. Oh. It's supposed to be another beautiful day. No. Oh. 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 See, I hope he's going to be all right. Howdy ho! My name's Mabel. What's yours? It's, uh, Millard. Well, Millard, you sure seem happy. Oh, yes. I'm happy. Very, very happy. Well, that's grand. But are you joyful? Joyful? What's the difference? Oh, there's a big difference, my friend. Happiness depends on your situation. But joy, and I mean real joy, comes from knowing that your sins are forgiven and you're going to heaven when you die. Do you think you're good enough to get there? To heaven? Well, not right now, but uh, sometimes I do. You know, I used to think I was good enough. I worked hard, did nice things for people. I even went to church every Sunday. But then someone showed me from the Bible that I wasn't good enough and never could be. Never? That's right, never. Just like everyone, I had broken God's commands over and over, and there was absolutely nothing I could do to fix it. And you know what that meant? I was headed for hell. Really? You mean... That's exactly what I mean. And talk about feeling hopeless. It was awful. Wow. Then what happened? Well, then came the good news. He explained how Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead. He paid my penalty so I could go free. And all I had to do was admit that I had broken God's laws, turn away from my sins, and trust in Jesus to save me. So, so that's what you did? You better believe it. And now I'm part of God's forever family. And, and it gives me so much joy that, that I just want to jump and shout. Wow. How'd you do that? I, I don't really know. Well, uh, Millard, let's talk about you. Oh. Oh, it's Mr. Romano. I can't talk anymore. I gotta go. Oh, but Hello, Mr. Romano? It's Millard. Millard? Uh, I was just getting warmed up, too. <sighs> Dear God, please help Millard understand how much he needs you, just like you did for me. And Lord, thank you for a wonderful day at Incredible World. Amen.
Now, would any of you like to ride on the Green Dragon roller coaster with me and Miss Barb right now? I would, I would. Okay, let's do this. Everybody, get in the car, put on your seatbelt, pull down the bar, and away we go. Up the big hill. points that it, it records and it has some low points too you know how those rides are always having high points mm -hmm. and low points 
Well, the Bible does too. So we're going to take a little thrill ride right now through the Bible, and you're going to help. Here we go. All right, we're ready to start our thrill ride through time. You're going to need a piece of paper and something to draw with, so you might want to pause and run and get that right now. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to tell you something, or Mr. Matt's going to tell you something, and you're going to help me decide whether it's a high point in time or a low point in time. All right, so we're going to just pretend like we're riding a roller coaster. Let's all practice. High point, woo! Low point, woo! All right, so we'll do that, and once we decide, then we will put the picture up, whether it's high or low, and you're going to draw your version. Ours is pretty advanced, but you just might want to do a quick stick figure or something like that, and you're going to put it wherever we put ours, either high or low. Okay, so are you ready for poster one? Here we go. Let's start our ride. Click, 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 click. So let me show you poster one. Our thrill ride starts with the very first words in the Bible. Do you remember what Genesis 1-1 says? Can you say it together with me? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Very good. Do you remember that when God made the earth, it was the best ever. It was perfect. So give me a big cheer, yeah, if you remember that everything was good. That's right. The Bible says over and over that it was very good. So this includes the first two people that he made. Do you remember the names of the first two people he made? Yell them out if you remember. That's right, Adam and Eve. So everything was good, and that means that there was nothing bad yet. So it's time for your help. Now, we've got our first poster here. Do you think that this is a high point, meaning it was a good time, or a low point, meaning it wasn't so good, okay? It was a hard time. So hands up if you think it was a good time, hands down if you think it was a low point. You're right, it was a high point. So we're gonna put our poster up high here, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna do a box at the top of your paper, and you're gonna draw this picture here however you want to draw it. Uh, you can do it detailed, you can do it real simple with stick figures. And we're gonna put a little dash here, kind of at the start of our thrill ride, all right? And so, as you're drawing that, I want you to be thinking about how the Bible tells us that everything was good. Back here, it was a perfect world, and there was nothing wrong. There was no sin. There was no death. The animals all got along. There was no fighting. That was a high point when it all began. So pause the video if you need to and finish drawing your first box up high, and then press play so that we can continue with our second drawing. So let me show you our next picture. This is when sin entered the world and things kind of went haywire. So do you think that this is gonna be a high point in time or a low point in time? Do what you think right now. I hope you said a low point in time. So we're gonna put this picture up down low. And you're gonna be able to draw it down low on your picture, okay? So just put it wherever you want, kind of at a low point right there. And then I'm gonna put some dashes for our thrill ride. We're gonna go from our high point when everything was perfect to a low point when sin entered the world. So there we go, that's where our ride's gone. All right, so you draw while I'm talking. Now, it, we were talking here in Genesis one and two, now we're going into Genesis three. And let me read you just a little bit. In fact, you can read this along with me if you want. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. Wow, so now we have this crafty or I might say sneaky or tricky serpent that's entered the sea, okay? And he said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? 
God had put these beautiful trees in the garden for Adam and Eve when everything was good when he made this. But the serpent is questioning that and say, did God say you shouldn't really eat that? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that's in the middle of the garden. You shall not touch it lest you die. Now God didn't tell them they weren't allowed to touch it, but that's what Eve is kind of elaborating and saying that God said. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. Wow, do you think that's true? Do you think that when Eve eats this forbidden fruit that she wasn't supposed to eat, do you think she's now gonna become like God? No, that's a trick that Satan is using. He's getting her to doubt God and God's word. He still uses that trick today, that evil serpent. All right, so let's keep going. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was a delight to the eyes and the tree was to be desired to make one wise. Ooh, she's thinking, hey, I'm gonna become wise if I eat this. She took of its fruit and she ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her. What's her husband's name? Yeah, it's Adam. And Adam ate it too. And then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and they made themselves cloths. So this is what happened. The perfect world was there with Adam and Eve. God just told them, don't eat from this one tree in the middle of the garden, but they ate from it. So they disobeyed. And when you disobey God, that's called sin. Anything we do that is not obeying God and what God tells us to do in his word is sin. Now, Adam was the first one to sin, but we all sin. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every person sins. Now, if you're not sure whether you've sinned or you can't understand what that means, I want you to think about this. Has there even been one time in your life ever that you didn't do what your mom or your dad or your grandma or your teacher or your foster mom asked you to do? Even one time when you hesitated and didn't do it. How about has there even been one time that you said something unkind or you got mad? Those are examples of sin. We all sin. And that's what happened when our ride took a plunge, all right? So keep drawing, pause the video if you need to, and then when you're done, let's move on in our thrill ride. So let's check out our third picture. So this is about a broken world. Since God is perfect, he has to punish sin. And as we travel along further in the Bible, we see that God punishes the serpent, the man, and the woman because they didn't obey him. So do you think that this punishment of sin and the world getting broken, do you see that as a high point or a low point? I bet you said it's a low point. So we're going to go ahead and begin to draw this down low on your papers. And we're going to put it right here next to our second picture and we got our little dash in between there. And so as you're drawing that, we're gonna continue reading in our Bible to see God go through uh, this part of punishing his sin. First, we're gonna check out Genesis 3, 14 and 15. This is what it says. It says, the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and the dust you shall eat all the days of your life. So you see, the serpent is being punished. Do you realize that when God says this, he applies this in a general way to all serpents. So that's why we see snakes today going around on their bellies and they're eating dust 
So other animals, they were affected too. We don't know how much they were affected, but we do know that before now, all the animals and people ate only plants and they got along with each other. So, but sometime after this, animals would start to turn against each other and would need ways to protect themselves. So God knew ahead of time that this was going to happen. So he knew that they would need to, at some point, uh, protect themselves. So he gave them ways to protect themselves. And we call those defense mechanisms. These would be things like that stinky odor from a skunk, or maybe the ink spray from an octopus, or the way that a starfish can break away one of its arms, or even that hard shell that a turtle has. And the list goes on and on of the way that God built in these defense mechanisms into all these animals. But before sin came into the world, they wouldn't have needed to use those types of things. So besides talking about animals, this punishment of a broken world applies to the ultimate evildoer, Satan, who's also known as the devil. This is when the war between man and God starts. When he talks about in verse 15, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. Okay, so it's talking about how man, there's going to be this enmity, which is kind of like this, this battle, this, this being against each other. Okay, and there's going to be this enmity between Satan and the seed or the 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 uh, offspring of Eve, okay? So Satan is against God, and he tries to make us doubt God's word and determine that we, we could just do everything on our own. So God goes on to tell the woman what her punishment will be. So let's check out Genesis 3, 16. To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. So what do you think this means? Well, the first one is, there's going to be pain in childbirth. So do you think that's true? <laughs> Absolutely true. There is pain in childbirth. Before this, there wouldn't have been that. It also says that the woman is going to desire to rule over her husband, which means that She'll want to be in control or in charge of her husband. So that's what God said to eat. Now let's see what he said to Adam in verses 17 through 19. All right. It says to Adam, he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and you have eaten of the tree, which I have commanded you not to eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you in pain. You shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth, uh, and, you shall, and you shall eat of the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread. And so, what do you think this means? The ground was also cursed. Thorns and thistles and things like that are popping up in nature. There wouldn't have been those before. So, God only placed the curse on animals and also on Eve and Adam. He also placed it on plants. This curse made the world a broken place. Before this, there wouldn't have been even things such as volcanoes, earthquakes, tsunamis, tornadoes, and other natural disasters. It is at this point when work became very hard. So every time you have to like clean your room or pull weeds or anything like that, study hard, do a job that you don't like, Remember, it all started right here. But more seriously, this is also the point where death came about. So let's close our eyes for a second, okay? Because of man's disobedience, God couldn't allow sinful man to live forever with perfect God. So he banished man from the garden so he wouldn't be able to eat from the tree of life. And he told him, that one day he would die. And the animals and the plants, well, they would die too. And so we're gonna put up our picture one more time. You can hit pause.
pause on the video if you need to so that you can finish drawing it and draw that picture of the broken world how you want to do that and then we'll move on to picture number four. So far we've got a perfect world and then sin entered the world and it broke the world so we have a broken world. Now the next picture is that Jesus enters the world. Jesus is God's perfect son that God sent to earth. Do you think this would be a high point in time when Jesus comes or a low point in time? I hope you said a high point. Woo! It's awesome. So let's put our next drawing up high. And I'm going to put it right about here. You can put it wherever you want on your picture. And I'm going to draw a few little lines going from our broken world. And now let's move our ride through time up to Jesus coming into the world. All right? You draw while I talk a little bit here. Now, this is really, really good news when Jesus comes into the world because Jesus came as a baby. That's what we celebrate at Christmas time. And that's why it's such a celebration. God didn't want to leave us in a state where we are separated from him, where we just die and we don't get to still be with him. God loves us so much, as it says in John 3, 16, that he sent his only son to save us. He sent him into the world so we could have life with God. That's called eternal life, where we can live forever. You see, everything good in the world, everything at the beginning and everything we experience that's good is from God. And so he loves us and he wants a relationship with us. So he sent his son, Jesus, to rescue us. We're gonna learn more about that in a minute. But in the meantime, go ahead and pause the video, finish drawing this however you want, and then when you're ready, turn it back on and we'll continue. So let's check out our fifth picture. You see, Jesus, he was both God and man, and he lived a perfect life. He always obeyed God, but he was put to death, sinful man, put Jesus to death on a cross. So, when Jesus died, do you think that this was a high point or a low point? Now this one, it's a little bit tougher. So, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one down here as a low point, okay? Because I'm gonna put it down low so that it reminds us that Jesus died a very cruel and painful death when he was put to death on that cross. And so I'm going to draw my dashes down here to our low point. But when you think about this, Jesus died on the cross because he loves us. He did it for you. He did it for me. He did it for everyone. He took the punishment for all the wrong things that you and I have done. Even though he never did anything wrong, he took the punishment for those wrong things that everybody else does. So really, it is a high point too, because this, Jesus dying on the cross, is what made a way for us to be forgiven and for us to have eternal life. So you go ahead and check out this picture one more time. Press pause if you need to. And when you're ready to move on to picture number six, press play. All right, here we are to poster number six. And we left off with Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. And now he was put in a tomb and he was dead. But the next thing that happens is he comes back to life. I want you to help me think, would this be a high point in time or would this be a low point in time? I hope you said a high point in time. This is amazing. Jesus comes back to life. So we're gonna put our picture way up high like this. 
and we're gonna put some little dashes going from where we were down low to way up high because Jesus comes back to life. That is amazing. Now, of course, Jesus is God. He's God and he's God's son. So of course he can come back to life. Nothing is too hard for him. He has the victory over death. And the cool thing about that is if we are part of his family, we have victory over death too. We can live forever with him. Whenever it's time for us to die, we would go to heaven and be with Jesus. It's very exciting. So this is definitely a high point. So go ahead and draw that, pause if you need to, and then we'll move on to our final part of the thrill ride, poster set. So this brings us to our last picture. Check this one out. Check out number seven here. See, this one's a little bit different than all of our other pictures so far because really, as our thrill ride comes to an end, the choice is up to you as to where you're gonna put this one. So I'm gonna put this one here in the middle, but really the choice is up to you because this picture shows us that everybody's ride is gonna end in one of two ways, either heaven or hell. But the choice is really up to every single person. We talked about how there was a perfect world God created it in six days and there was no sin and there was nothing wrong. There weren't thorns or, or fighting or, or tsunamis or anything like that. But then sin entered the world and we had a broken world with sickness and disease and death. And this sin, it separates us from a perfect holy God. But God didn't want to stay separated from us. So he sent his own son, Jesus, who is God. And Jesus came into this world. He lived a perfect life. He died on the cross for my sins and for your sins. And he rose again, proving that he was more powerful than death. He's more powerful than sin. And if we come to him and we ask him, he will forgive us of our sin. And we can be a part of his forever family. But the choice is up to each person whether they will believe this and receive this and so the choice is everyone's so what you need to do next check out our puppet video with miss barb and reese because they're going to be talking to you more about how you could admit believe and forever receive Welcome to day three of our Now What segment. And here's our first question. What's something or who is someone who makes you feel especially loved? It could be a kindness somebody does for you or a way they help you or maybe a way you spend time with somebody or something like that. I know lately, just lately, Mr. Randy, my husband's been making me popcorn at night and I just feel so loved that I just sit there and the next thing you know, he brings me a bowl of popcorn. That's so nice, but there's so many different things I could say to that. What is something that somebody does that makes you feel loved? Now our next question is the one we're doing every day. What did you learn about God today? Who he is, or maybe what he's done, or what he's even doing. I know I've been thinking today after this lesson that I am so thankful that God is love and that he loves me of everyone in the world. God loves me and he also forgives me for every sin I've ever done or the sins that I do today or the sins I'm going to do in the future because I've asked to be his child and I really want him to forgive me and he will if I mean it like that. So those are some things I'm thinking about. What are you thinking about God today? What did you learn today? All right, go ahead and talk about that. Mm -hmm. 
All right, here's our awesome activity for today. Read John 3, 16 together. It's such a famous verse. It's such a great one. And then you want to try to remember that. So make up some motions to it or maybe a song or maybe motions and songs together so that you can remember that important verse. And then what I want you to do is talk to each other about what God means to you. Was there ever a time that you actually did ask God to forgive you of your sins and that you wanted to be a child of God? If you did, maybe share that together. And if you didn't, maybe talk about that right now. All right. So have a good time and we'll see you tomorrow. Today we're gonna make a bug jar. Have you ever gone out and caught bugs in a bug jar? It's so fun. All right, so you're going to need for this a plastic jar with a screw on lid, and then you're going to get something, if you want to make a handle, something you can make your handle with. We used two pipe cleaners that we just twisted together, but you could use a zip tie, you could use yarn or ribbon or anything, string. All right, you're going to need for a parent or an adult to drill two holes in the top, Okay, you want to make sure you have a couple holes there so they can breathe and also so you can get your handle through there. And then you're also going to want something that you can kind of decorate it with. We got these little fun foam, different little flowers and stuff, but you could use stickers or whatever you really want, okay, to decorate your bug jar. Now, when you get your bug jar ready and you go out, you might want to put a couple things in there like maybe some grass or something like that for your bugs to have. And like I said, you might go out during the day, you might go out at night. I know fireflies are so fun because they light up. And you know that light? Well, of course, God made it for a reason because God makes everything for a reason. We found out that those are used even in medical research. They've been using those learning about cancer with that light. Isn't that cool? And fireflies also go around and they'll go to one flower and they'll get a little treat and then they'll, they'll go over to another flower and, and get something and go over to another one. And while they're doing their, that, they're doing something called pollinating the flowers, which means they're dropping little things that help it grow and the flowers grow and that helps us. It just all works together because God thinks of everything. So if you want to catch some bugs and learn more about them, make sure you check out the Kids Answers page on Answers in Genesis. They've got some great information about some of the bugs you might be collecting. But have a great time making your bug jar and I'll see you tomorrow. Hey everyone. Hey everyone, hi Reese. You know how much I love roller coasters. They have their highs and their lows, but it's always a great feeling to come whooshing into the landing safe and sound. Oh, it sure is. Well, life is kind of like a roller coaster too. You know what? We've just been talking about that. I really want all the boys and girls to come in safe and sound to heaven someday. Me too. But to do that, they need to know that there are really just two possible endings. You're right. There's only two. There's one, which is the ultimate high point, which is living in heaven with God someday. And then the other is really the ultimate low point. It's a bad place called hell, and we don't want anybody to be there. So to make it to that ultimate high point, you really have to become a child of God. We're not born automatically a child of God. And so we have to find out how we can have that gift of eternal life that he will offer us. And it really has something to do with a couple words, doesn't it, Reese? Yeah, it has to do with admit, believe, and forever receive. Right, the first word is admit. Let's all say that one together. Admit. admit. Right. Admit means that you admit to God that you are a sinner. Now, if you don't know what it means to be a sinner, it means that we're not obeying God's rules that he laid out for us in the Bible. And so it might be something like he tells us to obey our parents 
well, maybe we don't always obey our parents, right? I would guess most of you at some point could say, I didn't obey my parents. Or, or he tells us not to complain, but I bet all of us at some point, we probably complained. Have you ever complained, Reese? I sure have. Yes. And you know, maybe we've whined or maybe we have been unkind to somebody or, or bullied somebody or been mean. These are all examples of sin. And so we're all sinner. we're sinners. We're born that way and we have to admit that to God. So that's the first step. The next one is the word believe. Let's say that word together. Believe. believe. Yes. So we have to believe that Jesus really is God. And he one day was born into this world. He lived his life on earth as a man, but also fully God. And it was a perfect life. And one day, some men put him on a cross and they killed him, even though he was perfect and he had done nothing wrong, Reese. And then they put him in a tomb, and three days later, he rose from the dead. Isn't that cool, Reese? That's way cool. It's so cool. So you have to believe that. Do you believe that Jesus really is God, and he really did come and live and die to take away our sins, and then he rose back to life? And then the third words are forever receive. Let's say those together. Forever, forever receive. receive. Now that means that if you admit that you are a sinner and you have done wrong before God and that you believe Jesus came to take the penalty and the punishment for your sin and he died on the cross, that's why he did that and rose again, then you can forever receive him if you ask if you can be his child. This is how you become part of God's family. Now, it doesn't mean that necessarily life is always going to be easy. It still might feel a little bit like a roller coaster with some highs and some lows. Because remember, we talked about how we live on a broken earth. And sometimes things just don't always go great anymore. But we have a great and perfect God, and we can be his children if we admit, believe, and ask God if we can forever receive him to be his child. Isn't that cool, Reese? Yeah, admit, believe, and forever receive. Right. That is so cool. It is. And you know what? If you are interested in finding out more about how you can become a child of God, make sure that you find someone you know who loves Jesus, that you can talk to more about it. It might be a parent, a friend. It might be someone at your church, maybe even your children's pastor, your pastor, a small group leader. Make sure you find out more about how you can become a child of God. It's the biggest deal ever, all right? So admit, believe, and forever receive. Why don't we try saying our echo phrase together before we leave, Reese? Okay, that sounds great. All right, so I'm going to say admit, believe, and you're going to say forever receive, okay? And the boys and girls are going to be with you. You. Okay, here we go. Admit, believe, forever receive. All right, now I think that one is so exciting that we need to say it one more time really loud and jump up and down when we're saying it, all right? Are you ready, boys and girls? If you're sitting, you need to get up. I'm going to get up, all right? Admit, believe, forever receive. Woo! All right, talk to somebody if you would like to become a child of God. Admit, believe, forever receive.
not so bad. You're tempted to do many things that make God sad. Remember that the Bible's there to guide you every day. Just look for wisdom from God's book to see the world God's way. Put on your Bible glasses. Just look all around you, just step out your door. Creation surrounds you, the works of the Lord. Each beautiful flower, each hand-painted rose, our God is the artist, each color he chose. The answer is clear. We have a creator who put us all here. God spoke and it happened. All nature obeyed. His infinite power, creation displayed. God put the stars. And he calls them each by name He tells the sun it's time to get up And he tells the clouds it's time to rain Unforgettable, indescribable, unbelievable, inconceivable.